Playing Santa Claus for the holidays can be a very thankless job, having to stomp around yelling ho 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 for a bunch of spoiled kids screaming and yelling about what toys and gifts they want, but don't worry, this year you have an extra special little helper. She has a big smile and even bigger teeth. What's that? You want to be scared? Come with me. You will experience tales of horror, ghosts, and death. It is not recommended for the weak at heart. Listen in the dark. It's more fun that way. This is Weekly Spooky. Hello, my spookies. It's Saturday of the holiday season. We're getting very close to Christmas. So why not a little extra spooky for your weekly? I am Enrique Kuto, your host and narrator, and tonight's story is from our good buddy, Charles Campbell, over at the Horror 421 podcast. It's all about having an extra special helper for Santa Claus this season, a helper that is a lot more than meets the eye. But before we get to that, thank you so much for listening. We've been putting out a lot of extra content for the holiday season because we know you're out there working hard to make your holiday happen, whether it's working long hours, preparing your home for family members, or making, with your own two hands, the perfect holiday present. And we want to give you a little something to put in your ears that gives you fears. (laughs) I stand by that one. I like that one. But I just want to say thanks for listening. And if you're not subscribed, please do so on your favorite podcasting app because we have so much more coming. In fact, next week, we have two novellas and the full-length Babysitter Massacre novel Camp Carnage coming out on audiobook just for you listeners. Completely free, a little something extra under your tree. So make sure you're subscribed. And while you're over at Apple Podcasts or Spotify, why not leave us a five-star rating? It helps new spookies find the show. And if you find the holidays a little lonely, why not head over to Facebook and type in Weekly Spookies Tomb of Terror? It's completely free to join. It's where a group of us spookies all hang out and share memes and news stories and chat about this, that, and whatever. Myself and many of the authors from Weekly Spooky hang out there and we'd love to have you. Just go to Facebook and type in Weekly Spookies Tomb of Terror. But now... Time for the story after these quick words. Santa's Little Helper by Charles Campbell Holiday season in the valley is something different, to say the least. It doesn't exactly drop to freezing in this part of South Carolina. There is what locals call cold spells from time to time, but nothing like the bone-chilling freeze that other parts of the country routinely experience. And today, well, today was Christmas Eve. Ronnie Baxley hated everything about it. Unfortunately, for the last ten years, he and his rotund body were tapped to be Santa Claus for the Christmas tree lighting in downtown Burnettown. When he first started donning the red and white suit, the town would pay him 50 bucks for about five or six hours of work. Now he makes almost 200 bucks for begging little valley rats to sit on his lap. His once white beard was now something between baby shit yellow and turd brown. Ronnie had maybe seven teeth left in his head. His breath smelled of dog shit chased down with sewer water. Ronnie sucked in his gut and eased into the driver's seat of his beat up Chevy pickup. He gave the key a turn and the engine coughed and gagged like it had been smoking those Marlboros right along with Ronnie for the last 30 plus years. Ronnie turned the dial on the radio and was met with the sound of jingle bells. He immediately turned off the radio. The bald tire spun in the muddy driveway of his decrepit trailer as he backed out. Ronnie began to sing in the tune of the freshly in mind jingle bells. Driving through the mud 
in my fucked up Chevrolet. Off to the valley I go, broke as fuck today. The words trailed off into a da-da-da-da-da-da as his mind had run out of wit for freestyling. He didn't want to go to Burnett Town. Ronnie was sick of listening to the little and some not-so-little valley rats drone on about wanting a PlayStation machine or an Xbox or some kind of modern gadget. The kids weren't normal anymore. Faces always stuck in some kind of scream. Few and far between were the requests for footballs, basketball hoops, Barbie dolls, or bicycles. As a matter of fact, Ronnie was just as tired of the parents, especially the ones he knew from school, with their pity-filled eyes. Look at what has become of Ronnie. Poor guy had a great arm in high school. He could have gone pro. Should have had a career in the majors, but the valley got him like it got so many kids. If he saw one more tear-filled eye from a mother looking as if she were doing the world a service by feeding a stray, he was going to lose his shit. The sun was already setting when he arrived at town hall. He cursed daylight savings time every year when the clock rolled back. It meant that 6 p.m. was going to look the same as midnight, and that always made Ronnie tired as shit. Tonight was the one night he couldn't be tired. He'd have to sit on the big wooden chair, hoping there was still enough material in the seat of his pants to keep the splinters out of his ass, while pretending to listen as Betty Sue or Molly May tells him what kind of iPhone she wants. Because, you know... The elves are fucking masters at cutting-edge technology. Ronnie stood by his truck for a moment or two, taking a long drag on his last Marlboro. He'd have to wait until he got paid before he could pick up another pack from the minute shop. He'd have to bum a couple from Eddie the Elf to get him through the evening. Eddie was a tall, skinny man, definitely not built like an elf, and he was willing to take 75 bucks to usher kids to the lap of this sad excuse of a Santa. Ronnie was wishing for one more drag when a tiny voice startled him. Merry Christmas, Santa, said the little girl suddenly standing next to him. Where the, I mean, hey, little girl, where's your mama? Ronnie asked, forcing a smile. He had never seen this child before, and she didn't look like she had an ounce of valley in her. I don't have one, the little girl said just above a whisper. Ronnie looked her over. She couldn't have been more than seven years old, and she was dressed like a tiny elf. She had long black hair and the darkest pools for eyes Ronnie had ever seen. He thought maybe the darkness was playing tricks on him, but the parking lot was well lit. He knelt to meet her gaze, keeping his plastic smile. So, if you don't have a mama, is your daddy around? I don't have one of those either, she whispered. Who's here with you? Ronnie asked. You are, Santa, the little girl said as a grin spread under her nose. Ronnie was taken aback at the rows of razor-sharp teeth that clicked in front of him. What the fuck are you? Ronnie asked. He hadn't taken any strong shit and resisted the urge to reach out and touch her. If she wasn't real, he'd just look like he was talking to himself. But if she was real, she might just bite his fucking fingers off. I'm Santa's little helper, she whispered. What's your name? Ronnie asked. He knew he should be scared, but it was just the opposite. He couldn't explain it, but he was feeling giddy. Sarah, she replied. Well, Sarah, I already have a helper. His name is Eddie the Elf, Ronnie said. He could now hear people mulling around Sassafras Park, sight of the tree lighting and lap sitting. Eddie's not going to make it tonight, the little girl said with a certainty that Ronnie instantly believed. Oh, really? How do you know that? Ronnie asked. He's dead, she replied. And how do you know that? Ronnie found himself asking. He wasn't going to help you, Santa. He was going to hurt you like all the rest, she replied. Ronnie smiled with an understanding. 
that made the girl grin back. Okay then, let's go see the valley rats, Ronnie said. The front doors of Town Hall were wide open. There was a small line of husbands receiving cups of hot cocoa for their wives and tots. Sarah stuck by Ronnie's side as he strode past the line of kids hooping and hollering for their tortured Santa. He waved a stained glove in the air for their approval as he sat on the big wooden chair. Elma Trudeau, an office administrator for the town of Burnettown, leaned in and whispered in his ear. Where's Eddie? She asked while staring a hole through Sarah. He's sick, Ronnie replied, which elicited a closed-mouthed smile from Sarah. It was a smile that sent a feeling of despair through Elma. Who's going to control the line? Elma asked with a tone that clarified she was not willing to assume the role. I'm Santa's little helper, Sarah replied. Surely you can't suggest that a child... Oh, and by the way, whose child is this anyway? She's not from around here, Elma said. She's my niece. Her name is Sarah and she's visiting from Atlanta, Ronnie replied. I call bullshit, Ronnie. You don't have any family. Elma said. I would suggest you go back to your office, Elma. Sarah intervened, revealing her teeth. What the fuck? Elma whispered as she backed away. You should listen to her and go back to your office, Ronnie echoed and stood. Elma's hands trembled and eyes widened as she slowly backed away. Ho, ho, ho! Eddie the Elf is not feeling well, so... Santa has a new helper today, Ronnie announced to the expanding line of children. There were cheers and shouts from the boys and girls. Sarah moved quickly to the front of the line and lifted the retractable belt from the stanchion. Mary Jenkins and her little boy Sam were the first in line. Sarah giggled as she reached for Sam's hand. He took it without hesitation as Mary stepped through. Sarah looked back as if to tell the next kid, She would have to wait her turn before taking Sam to Santa. Ronnie resisted the urge to roll his eyes at Mary Jenkins, who is now Mary Utley. She was a cheerleader in high school and he actually had clumsy sex with her once in the boys' locker room. It was definitely nothing memorable for her because, as he recalled, he was almost done before they got started. The kid sat on his lap and he could feel the look of pity from Mary boring into the side of his skull. Poor Ronnie. I can't believe we actually fucked once. Look at him now. Poor, poor Ronnie. Sam was blabbing to Ronnie about a video game, and Sarah tapped Mary on her arm with a sharp, pointy fingernail. What is it? Mary asked, taken out of her pitiful thoughts of Ronnie. Santa doesn't like you, and neither do I, Sarah said. Mary's eyes widened in surprise as Sarah smiled at her with clicking teeth. Sam, let's go, Mary shouted as she grabbed Sam by the arm as he was still in the midst of explaining why this particular PlayStation game was a must to have under the tree. Mary pulled him so violently Sam's arm almost came clean out of its socket. Mom, ow, Sam screamed as she began dragging him away. Let's go. Mary shouted. Sarah moved quickly, grabbing Mary by her not-so-dainty wrist. Mary's mouth drew back in disdain as the little girl's skin-to-skin touch was icy cold. You're not nice. You deserve what's coming to you, Sarah said, and then released her grip. Mary dragged a screaming Sam behind her. While all this was going on, nobody in the line of kids sensed what kind of craziness was happening. Crazy shit was par for the course on Highway 421, even on Christmas Eve. Ronnie watched in joy and amazement. This shit was making him so happy. Sarah clicked her teeth at him as she went to get the next kid. Barbara Spradley was next with her kid Lisa. Ronnie wasn't a fan of the Spradley clan. They were pretty much valley royalty, owning several businesses on this stretch of road. The six-year-old scampered up to Santa, 
holding Sarah's cold hand. She had the distinct spradly dimple in her chin, with eyes so big she almost looked like a character from a Dr. Seuss book. Hey, Santa, Lisa said with a lisp. Hey, little one, what do you want for Christmas this year? I want a Barbie dream house and a couple of new Barbies because I cut the hair off the other ones and, uh, Ethy bake oven, Lisa finished. Ronnie was taken aback with Lisa. She was a little girl that actually wanted little girl gifts. It was nothing that needed the smart descriptor or required the timed mashing of buttons on a video game controller. Again, these requests were few and far between, but when they came, it made Ronnie feel somewhat normal for a few seconds. Sarah noted the genuine smile on Ronnie's face and felt his approval, so she stayed quiet and gave Barbara a closed-mouthed smile, which Barbara politely returned. The next kid was big, and so was his father. It was Travis Cheatham and his son, Little Travis. Sarah reached for Little Travis's hand and he jerked away, giving her the finger in the process. Big Travis chuckled as if to say, That's my boy. Sarah smiled. Hey, fucknut, Big Travis shouted as Little Travis pulled himself up onto Ronnie's lap. Ronnie groaned at the weight of almost 200 pounds of this 11-year-old. Ronnie remembered Big Travis. They were once teammates, but never friends. Big Travis always had a jealous streak, and he loved seeing Ronnie like this. Big Travis ran a shady lawn care company in the valley, mostly cash transactions. He liked tossing his weight around figuratively and literally. His kid was 200 pounds, and Big Travis was over three bills, almost four. Hey, fucknut, my dad is talking to you, little Travis repeated. That's not very nice, Sarah intervened before Ronnie could speak. Who asked you, you little bitch? Little Travis replied while looking back at the approving smile of his pops. Listen here, you will be getting coal in your stocking. You can't talk to my little... Shut the fuck up, Ronnie. You are a fucking loser. Nobody loves you. You stink like ass and you're the sorriest sack of shit Santa I've ever seen. Little Travis didn't get the last word out. Sarah moved with cat-like quickness. She jerked little Travis from Ronnie's knee and sank her teeth into the side of his neck, ripping out his trachea in one fell swoop. Blood spewed like a geyser from the dying kid's neck. Big Travis was still trying to register what he was seeing. The color had flushed from his face. Kids were now screaming. Sarah leapt from little Travis and lunged at big Travis, her claws digging into his soft, flabby flesh. She scaled up and around his back like a lizard on a brick wall. Ronnie was smiling. Ronnie was laughing. Ho, 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 fucknut, Ronnie shouted as Sarah raked her claws across Big Travis's face, opening gouges in his fat cheeks. Big Travis grabbed Sarah by the hair with his huge hands and pulled with all his strength. Sarah didn't budge. She was now clicking her teeth in front of his frightened eyes. You aren't a nice man. You can't treat Santa like that and live. Sarah pressed the sharp claws of her thumbs right into Big Travis's eyes. They went so deep she could feel the soft tissue beneath them. Big Travis fell face first as Sarah leapt from his chest. Her movements were fluid and fast. Now this shit had everyone's attention. Children were screaming, mothers were calling for fathers, and gunshots began to fill the air. This had gone well beyond regular 421 crazy shit. Ronnie was smiling as he watched Santa's little helper go to work. She was blindingly fast. She was eviscerating every man with a gun. Ronnie felt the pain in his chest. He was hit, but he was still grinning. The blue lights of the Burnettown police were now everywhere. There would be no tree lighting this year and Sarah was still moving through the crowd. She was in a blood frenzy of death and destruction. Ronnie felt the warmth of blood flowing from his wound. Shots were still ringing out, but there were less of them. Ronnie stood in front of the wooden chair watching the mayhem in front of him. Not five minutes ago, the kids were in line with their pity-filled mothers waiting to beg him for shit he could never afford himself. 
The way these people treated Ronnie over the years was shameful. No words of encouragement from any of them. Just fucking pity. That's why Ronnie hated Christmas. But not this year. No, sir. The girl was his vengeance. She knew. She could sense the ones that had been cruel to Ronnie and the ones that didn't offer help, only pity. Sarah could smell it on them as she literally cut through town. Merry Christmas to all! And to all a good night! Ronnie shouted as one more shot rang out. It found its mark, hitting him in the forehead. The last thing he saw was Sarah's face and her clicking teeth as everything went dark. Ronnie died right there, but he died with the solace that he'd experienced the best Christmas ever. It was finally his happy ending. Sarah was his elf of vengeance, and he loved her for it. I gotta hand it to Charles Campbell, he never disappoints, and I was thrilled that we got to take a little trip to the valley for Christmas. I hope you all enjoyed that story as much as I did, and I hope it's helping you feel a little bit of that warm, fuzzy holiday feeling, especially if you've been missing it. I also want to mention real quick, if you haven't joined our Patreon yet, I would really appreciate it. Just go to weeklyspooky.com and click on Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you get access to all kinds of exclusive content and most importantly, an exclusive series that's currently running called The Weekend about a group of kids who go and stay at an abandoned campground and things don't exactly go super well for them. It's written by Rob Fields and it takes place in our Strickfield universe, so you know you're going to have a lot of fun. Just head over to weeklyspooky.com and click on Patreon. And speaking of, I want to say an extra special thank you to our Patreon podcast boosters. These are folks who pay just a little bit more to hear their names at the end of the show. And they are Johnny Nix, John Callen, Bobbletopia.com, Megan Hua, Julia Kirsch, Brent McCullough, Steve King, Karen Wiemet, Jack Kerr, and Craig Cohen. If you want to hear your name in that list, and I would love to read it, Every time in my silky voice, just go to weeklyspooky.com, click on Patreon, and select any tier at $15 a month or higher. You'll get this, you'll get video podcasts, lots of other exclusives, but most importantly, you'll guarantee that I keep bringing the spooky on the weekly. And I really do appreciate it, but now it's time for me to get back to work. We have shows all next week, every single day, including Christmas Day. So for myself, For my executive producer, Rob Fields, my producer, Dan Wilder, and our composer, A. Mattis, I will talk at you very, very soon. So stay warm and uh, don't forget to sharpen your teeth just a little bit. Festive. Thank you for listening. Make sure to find your way back next week. But for now, you are safe. Trust me. (laughs) 